Top of the hour, let's get straight to the breaking news. Right now, a manhunt underway in Colorado for an armed woman who the FBI says is infatuated with the Columbine mass shooting. Authorities are searching for 18-year-old Sol Pais. According to the FBI, Pais arrived in Denver on Monday and immediately went to a store where she bought a pump-action shotgun and ammunition. And as the manhunt unfolds, hundreds of thousands of students are being kept out of school at numerous schools in that area. This comes just days ahead of what will be the 20th anniversary of the Columbine shooting. CNN score correspondent Scott McLean is live this morning in Littleton, Colorado. Uh, we, you've been following this. I spoke to a sheriff in the last hour, really, I don't want to say panicked, but, but a very serious manhunt to look for her. Is there any progress? Uh, well, no reported sightings in the last 24 hours, Jim, but we are learning more about this 18-year-old woman, Sol Pais. We know that she's a high school student in Miami Beach. That was uh, confirmed by the local school board there. Uh, we know that her father is a musician, and according to the Miami Herald, the reporter actually went to her home, spoke with a man who identified himself as her dad. He said that he lost touch with her on Sunday. He also said that he believes that she may have some sort of mental issue or mental problem, but he thinks that she is going to be okay. That seems to be the concern, though, from law enforcement. These vague threats that she's made, these non-specific threats that she's made, and this infatuation that law enforcement says that she seems to have with the Columbine school shooting that took place 20 years ago on Saturday and with the shooters who carried it out and killed 13 people. Now, the information initially that sparked all of this came from the FBI in Miami. How they got hold of it is not unclear. But yesterday, uh, it, by the time it got to Denver, by the time they were able to investigate, there were actually many schools put on lockout. That means it's business as usual inside the school, uh, but no one was allowed to come or go. And even when they did release those students, they had a lot of security and a lot of police there on hand. Um, in response to today's situation, given that she hasn't been found, uh, there are some 20 school districts, not schools, school districts that have been closed down. We're talking about hundreds of schools. It's really hard to overstate just how significant that is in a city the size of Denver. I'll read you what the Denver Public Schools put out. They said in collaboration with other Denver metro area school districts, all Denver Public Schools will be closed on Wednesday, April 17th. Due to the ongoing safety concern, all facilities and programs are closed for the day. There will be no afternoon activities or athletic competitions. I can also tell you, Jim, that the Jefferson County School District, they'll be meeting uh, today with their security folks to try to figure out how they go forward. They're holding a press conference later on this morning as well. One other interesting thing to note is that the FBI was asked last night in a press conference what they would actually charge her with, and they didn't have an answer. They just said um, that, look, they're working with the U.S. attorney to figure what figure out what charges would be appropriate, asked what they would do if they came across her. They said they would arrest her and try to hold her as long as they legally could. Jim. Scott McLean, thanks very much for more on how this manhunt is unfolding. Let's bring in FBI supervisory agent, former Josh Campbell. Josh, good to have you on this story. Uh, so they're taking this very seriously. You don't close down a dozen schools in a massive school district around Denver tens of thousands of students affected unless you're taking the threat seriously in part because she bought a shotgun she has this infatuation with columbine they used a shotgun gun in columbine uh, explain what authorities are doing right now to find her so an incredible step here, Jim, you know, closing down these schools, essentially, obviously very disruptive, but that shows the seriousness with which law enforcement is taking this case. Now, the FBI and law enforcement agencies across the country, they get hundreds, thousands of tips that come in uh, daily, weekly, and they have to sift, sift through them and determine what is credible and what's not. And they really go through this process to determine if a threat comes about, is it specific and is it credible? What we're hearing from law enforcement officers here is that this is not specific, which is why you see so many schools being locked down as a precaution but they are deeming this to be credible. Now, the second aspect of an investigation, when you look at that through the lens of investigators, you're trying to determine, does this person have the intent and the capability? If it's just intent and they're not able to get their hands on weapons or act on, you know, whatever that intent might be, then that's another issue. Here, we know that she went and purchased a shotgun. So this is someone that authorities believe not only has the intent, but has the capability. They're sparing no expense here. This is, I was texting with someone who was uh, on the ground there, a law enforcement officer, who said it's all hands on deck, federal, state, local, fanning out, trying to find this person trying to stop a potential threat. You know, when you look at other shootings, Parkland included, of course, in the post-mortem, a lot of the focus is on underreaction, right? There were warning signs. Why didn't uh, the school district, why didn't police react? 
I imagine the decision makers in Denver are affected by other incidents in the past uh, as they operate what appears to under what appears to be an abundance of caution here. Yeah, that's right. And you go back and look at Parkland. Obviously, there were signs that were missed there where you had tips that were coming in, uh, which was, you know, appeared to be a failure by law enforcement. No one wants a repeat of that. Whenever something happens, if there's an incident, the most gut wrenching thing that can happen to a law enforcement officer or agency is to know that there was something there that you could have stopped a uh, tip, a lead, something coming through the transom. Uh, so here we see law enforcement officers taking this very seriously. And again, we don't know the specific nature of that tip that came in from Miami that was then shared to officials in Colorado, but it at least it rises to that level that's giving them enough concern. And I don't think we can lose sight of the fact also, as we hear that this person had some kind of infatuation with Columbine, that we're coming up upon the 20th anniversary of Columbine, which, again, as you're a law enforcement officer, you're looking at the totality of the circumstances. That's one important data point. Is this someone who's trying to attempt to do some type of copycat attack? Obviously, law yeah. enforcement officers taking this very seriously. April 19th is that. Just very quickly, Josh, you know, all the talk of gun laws, et cetera, following other shootings. So she hasn't committed a crime. Let's say they catch her tomorrow. Hasn't committed a crime. Can the police disarm her? So th they could, I mean, if they come up and she has a weapon, then I, that's a no, no brainer. I mean, they will mm -hmm. try to put, stop any potential threat. I think they have enough there that they could describe uh, to a judge, for example, if mm -hmm. they you know, wanted to take action. I think the question is, you know, it's, it's twofold. There's this issue, obviously, what would she be charged with? Right now, law enforcement officers are focused more on stopping a potential threat. And if that mm -hmm. involves coming up, interdicting her, making contact with her, mm -hmm. conducting an investigative detention, they're going to do that. Again, their, fo their focus right, right now is public safety. A second order issue will be what do you do with her after that. Right now, they're yeah. just focused on getting her. Get her in. Josh Campbell, thanks very much. Thanks, Jim.